and welcome back as Phil Wiggett would say on the Tour de France uh, the camera thing kind of cut off for something I hit a clicked the wrong something on my laptop it stopped me from uh, continuing and I still went on for like two or three minutes before I realized oh my camera's not on anymore that's weird Okay, so looking here in the plan of organization, um, again, there are, uh, the NCFYRs have come out against Amendment 1 to the state plan of organization. Uh, they say there are already safeguards in the plan of organization under Article 9, Section F, page 37, against conflicts of interest and requirements for recusal making this amendment to the plan of organization completely unnecessary. Okay, so uh, Section F, refrain from utilizing powers of office in, in Republican primary. Each officer and each member of any committee created pursuant to this plan of organization shall refrain from utilizing the powers and dignity of his or her office or position in any Republican primary for public office at any level, nor shall any committee created pursuant to this plan of organization, make or issue in any way, manner, or form any endorsement in any Republican primary for public office, nor shall any committee issue any contrary endorsement or withhold support from any nonpartisan judicial candidates properly endorsed pursuant to this plan of organization. Okay. So that takes care of the endorsing and primaries thing. Um, current language on this um, on this um, part of the plan of organization is, is as follows: In the event that the chairman or vice chairman of the, of the state party or any district legislative, judicial, or county party county party shall announce his intentions to run for public office or shall file. A notice of candidacy with the Board of Elections, that person shall be deemed to have resigned his office within the party effective seven days after the close of filing. And the then existing vacancy shall be filled as provided for herein. Okay, so this right now it gives a person a seven day a seven day grace period. So the party can transition you know they can say their goodbyes this person if joe smith uh you know if say joe smith was chair of warren county and he decided to run for state legislature okay okay joe thanks for your service to warren county uh say goodbye and we'll take seven days and we'll find a replacement for you the amendment the change to the amendment takes that out and says immediately you're done and then it's like well who's gonna replace joe smith you know we're we don't have a county chair anymore you know do we have to handle this all at the same time it just it just it adds it it it, it, it takes something that's already good and it replaces it with something that adds chaos doesn't make any sense. And I can see why Catherine Whiteford, um, the chair of the NCFYRs, has come out strongly against this, and I agree with her completely. Um, let's see. <clears throat> um, now, in those cases, this, okay, this current language in the plan of organization says, in those cases where the party office held by said person is at the county level, the party official may petition the county executive committee for exemption from this pr pr provision and the county executive committee may may for good cause shown grant such an exemption with a two-thirds affirmative vote this exemption shall be deemed void if any other republican files with the board of elections for the same public office within that election cycle okay so then it adds um again if Joe Smith of Warren County says, I, I just want to run for county commissioner, can I still stay on the county the county party as the chairman? Well, okay, we can give you an exemption as long as two-thirds of the may say yes. However, um, 
you know, if Bob Crane, it's a name my former boss, just thought that. If Bob Crane decides he want, also wants to run for one for the county commissioner as a Republican, and Bob Crane and Joe Smith are running for one spot, then if Bob, if um, Joe Smith decided to stay on or wanted to stay on as county chair while running for board of board of commissioners then that would be implied that the county has already endorsed by uh, endorsed joe smith for warren county board of commissioners does that make sense I, I hope that makes sense and i hope that can you know um type some loose ends of yeah the ncfr's are 100% correct. This plan realization change should not go through. Okay. Sure, we covered that. Okay. I was thinking about reading April Woods stuff, but I already covered her actually when she's just running for the Court of Appeals, so you know, I don't like repeating myself on these uh, blogs, but okay. Craig Kinsey for Congress. His main bullet points are reduce national debt, secure the border, protect Second Amendment, stop critical race theory, and ensure election integrity okay he says ncjp delegates my name is craig kinsey and i'm running for congress in 2022 i am a small business owner i am concerned about the direction the federal government is heading heading in this country he said county by assuming it's country we need to get involved now it is our responsibility to protect the freedoms of future generations our capitalist system is the best system in the world, and it offers people the opportunity to achieve their goals. The capitalist system supports individualism and creativity and has given the world great advancements in science and technology. I am not willing to walk away from these successes and surrender to a more con controlled society. Washington is creating trillions of federal debt. If we taxed all the billionaires 100%, it would not cover the debt. Yeah, but the left does not care. It's like monopoly money to them, right? Increase in taxes on the rich sounds good to many people, and it gets them votes. We need leaders in Washington who will get this economy growing again with lower taxes, and will create incentives for small businesses to grow and compete. The goal is to lower unemployment and increase the size of the middle class. On immigration, what Trump was doing was working. He secured the border and expanded construction on the border wall. The House and Senate missed an opportunity to pass legislation to protect the American people by fixing our broken immigration system. We need people in Washington with solutions to fix the problems, not duck them. The Second Amendment. We need to stop democratic efforts to erode your Second Amendment rights, i.e., shall not be Second Amendment uh, right to bear arms shall not be infringed. Thomas Jefferson stated, "The strongest reason for the people to retain the right to bear arms is, as a last resort, to protect themselves against tyranny and government." What do you feel is happening right now? Ooh, <laughs> education is the key to a successful future. Let us get back to folks and on three R's. Writing, reading, writing, arithmetic, or reading, reading, writing, arithmetic. There you go. Uh, number two, the schools must stop t teaching critical race theory and revisionist history. Concern in health care. We have the best health care in the world in spite of what the left wants you to believe. President Trump deserves recognition for organizing the pharmaceutical companies to develop a vaccine in record time. Let us not lower our standards to be equal to the rest of the world. Let us focus on improving our system. I am Craig Kinsey. I am running for the 4th Congressional District in North Carolina, and I want your votes. Okay, so we'll definitely keep an eye on him.
Okay. <clears throat> Sherry Lynn Womack for Vice Chair of the North Carolina Republican Party. Christian conservative combat veteran. Biography. Lieutenant Colonel Sherry Lynn Womack, U.S. Army, retired. Lieutenant Colonel Sherry Womack entered the Army at age 17 in 1981 as an enlisted medic. After attaining the rank of Staff Sergeant, she attended the Army's Warrant Officer course and a mere two years later accepted a commission as a Second Lieutenant Medical Officer. Following the tragedy of September 11, 2001, Sherry deployed with the 101st Air Assault Division Rakasan Brigade into Afghanistan, deployed in the early stages of Operation Durin Freedom in January 2002. And just hours after arrival, she was assigned the duty of triaging and treating Taliban prisoners at the Kandahar Air Base Detention Facility. Some of the same individuals now occupy the prison at Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Later, she was specifically detailed as a medical liaison to U.S. Special Forces in theater and participate in highly experimental operations designed to provide medical care while gathering intelligence information from local Afghan citizens. Sherry was awarded the Bronze Star Medal and Combat Medical Badge for her... Uh, meritorious actions in Afghanistan. Her service and operation during freedom is memorialized in a permanent exhibit inside the U.S. Army Women's Museum at Fort Lee, Virginia. LTC Womack, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Womack, graduated from the U.S. Army Command and Staff College in 2007, after which she deployed for 15 months of combat duty in Iraq. The second combat tour earned her a second Bronze Star Medal. After her return in 2008, she served as the first female 18th Airborne Corp Senior Physician Assistant, U.S. Army Forces Command, and retired with 33 years of active service. Most recently served as a state social services commissioner and recognized by the governor as one of North Carolina's most outstanding female combat veterans. Okay, biography notes. Native North Carolinian, uh, 33 year military medical career, right, retired Army Lieutenant Colonel, Afghanistan and Iraq War Vet, Legion of Merit, two Bronze Stars, a master de Master's Degree in Physician Studies, Professional Medical Education, Professional Medical Educator. Accomplished senior administrator, NC Social Services Commission member, and a mother of five children. Nice. Uh, serving on the Lee County Board of Education is a frontline battle as she continues the fight against critical race theory and the all left wing liberal act activities indoctrinating our children. As the campaign manager for the youngest female ever elected office, in the state of North Carolina, Sherry's proven she can attract our youth and get them engaged. I believe that is the county commissioner in Lee County. Uh, what's her name? Palazzano or some long Italian name. I probably mispronounce. I am. I apologize. Uh, but yeah. Uh, she also served as the Women for Trump director with over 2,600 members throughout North Carolina. Sherry ran several Women for Trump boot camps where patriotic ladies trained joyfully with the fine purpose of promote conservative values and candidates. Sherry helped build floats and organized multiple parades for local parties throughout the state. She created mascots for various statewide candidates, including Trump Pella and Scooby Nooby, and she designed the Justice League brand for several for uh, statewide judges, demonstrating her creativity and innovation. Boots on the ground is more than a catchphrase for Sherry as she travels across the state, participating in get out the vote events and work in local polls in five different counties. She traveled across the state to work in polls for Congressman Dan Bishop and Dr. Greg Murphy. 
Sherry realizes resources in our precincts and counties with the tools they need along with strategic planning and goal setting are the best ways to ensure success and win local, state, and federal government races. She has attended and assisted with over a dozen classes related to promoting the Republican Party conservative values. I think she meant counties there instead of classes. Uh, Sherry currently serves as vice chair of the Lee County Republican Ladies Club. Uh, she is also a true activist, traveled to Washington, D.C. during the Kavanaugh hearings, Freedom Works events, and traveled to rally for her defendant voter ID requirements. She joined many thousands of supporters attending the Trump rally on January 6, 2021, showing support for our true president. Sherry Womack exudes patriotism, education, honesty, political professionalism, charisma, intelligence, responsibility, strength of character, service to the people, and bravery. Now, more than ever, we need someone to motivate, energize, and inspire our rank-and-file Republicans while bringing hope to our cause as we unite for the common purpose of promoting and growing the NC Republican Party. We need a proven winner to breathe fresh energy and leadership into the North Carolina Republican Party. We need Sherry Lynn Womack. Yes, we do. We hope and pray that we will join us and attend the state convention in Greenville to vote and make Sherry Lynn Womack the vice chair of our party. Thank you. Next two years will be a war on our conservative Christian values. Now more than ever, our NC Republican Party needs strong, trustworthy, proven leadership that can unite Republicans across the state. Sherry Lynn Womack provides a spark that unites us all. Yes. So please vote Sherry Lynn Womack. Yeah, I know it seems like um, Susan Mills is the front runner, the favorite, but you never know until you vote. And Susan Mills has uh, a pretty long list of endorsements. Sherry Lynn Womack, maybe not as many endorsements, but just look. Both of these candidates are great, qualified women. Both will do a, will do a good job as vice chair, but I think Sherry Wynn Womack will do just a little bit better because, um, I mean, she's been in the fight. Uh, uh, she received so much backlash from the Democrats and the media for attending that January 6th rally for Trump. And... The media and the left treated her like she was one of those those scumbags who actually broke into the Capitol and attacked it and physically vandalized it. But she did none of that. She was just at the rally for Trump. That's it. There was no evidence whatsoever that she actually vandalized the Capitol. You know, most of these people that vandalize the Capitol, the, these are like your... You're you're so far right from you know these are your people who aren't your everyday people. These are like your hillbillies, and I'm not saying all hillbillies are bad, but these are like you know your 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 people that constantly drive around with the Confederate flag on their vehicle, and you know are racist and just think white supremacy is the way to go, and black people are. You know, scumbags, which they're clearly not. You look at Dr. Ben Carson, the late Herman Cain, uh, Herschel Walker running for Senate in Georgia, Brian Donalds, congressman from Florida, and Vernon Jones, I think that's his name, run for governor of Georgia, Mark Robinson, great lieutenant governor here in North Carolina. There are so many great non whites are great Republicans as well. Well, this has been a very long video, but if you've been listening all this time, thank you so much. Thank you for your support. And I will certainly uh, tomorrow night give you a nice summary of Friday's business session, whatever it is, because Usually in the program, we know what's going to happen at the business session. This year, we have no idea. It's crazy. It's an unsolved mystery, right? Anyway, I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.